Uh, one is one of the most uh, dedicated and honest and hardworking journalists uh, you're ever likely to meet. Um, his real strength is that he really cares passionately uh, about the little guy. Um, sometimes, much to my distress, when perhaps I'm trying to get uh, a box at the Yankees to take some friends to and one decides he's going to write about how much money the Yankees have ripped the city off for, but that's his job and that's what he does and God bless him for it. He is totally committed to the city of New York. He's totally committed to the New York Daily News. And more than anything else, he's totally committed to making changes. He passionately believes that the role of newspapers is to make things better for people, to improve the city in which they live, uh, to try and highlight the real injustices that happen in a city like ours. And he does a wonderful job of doing that. Um, one really is uh, a man of the people and whenever we want a story about real people facing real issues in a city like this, one is the sort of columnist who will turn in that sort of story. We all know about the Parity Project and how successful it has been and what it has meant in, in changing the way newsroom makeup has been in so many places. What a lot of people probably don't know is how it got its birth. That happened in early 2003 when Juan and I and the heads of some of the other coalition organizations met with ASCD uh, members and leadership in Memphis to discuss diversity. It was at that meeting that Juan made a very impassioned argument about why we need to change our newsrooms, pointed out what he wanted to accomplish in the parody project, speaking about it publicly for the first time. He gave such an important discussion about it at that moment that right after he spoke, Mike Phillips of Scripps Howard raised his hand and said, I'll be your guinea pig. I will launch the parody project with you. And he did. It's Scripps Howard's paper in Rocky Mountain News in Denver. And from there it spread to other publications uh, in Scripps Howard and to other publications around the country. I don't know of anybody who could have gone into that room speaking to that leadership group and made such an argument as Juan did and come up with a result. We walked out of the room later and were stunned by what had happened and how quickly we were able to convince uh, the rest of the industry to act in the parody project, but it was really Juan's doing. Well, first of all, Juan throughout his whole career has been committed to the Latino community. I mean, he, he started off his, um, his life in activism, pretty much, his adult life. I mean, he was a young lord. Back in the early 1980s, he helped to uh, create the National Congress for Puerto Rican Rights in, uh, out of Philadelphia, he started a nonprofit organization. Um, he's become, in, in his columns, he has totally has written about the Latino experience. He has written books, Harvest of Empire, which is you know a great book about the history of Latinos in the United States. He, he has chronicled the struggle, the triumphs, and uh, the obstacles faced by the community. He, so he's he's constantly had, has been writing about it. And then, as a leader of an organization, he has been trying to. Uh, uh, he pushed NHJ and the organization, and he pushed the Latino, Latino journalists to uh, to be leaders themselves in their newsrooms. Well, I think Juan is, uh, to me, he's been a, a leader since the day I started serving on the National Association of Hispanic Journalists uh, founding board. Uh, he was always insightful. He would uh, tell us, try to get us to think, think big, not just think of. Uh, of uh, coming hat in hand with the rest of the journalism world when we were really just getting started as an organization. He, he, uh, one thing he did that I think was hugely uh, important was when uh, the newspaper guild was on strike uh, against the New York Daily News that, uh, and they, they were really going backwards instead of forwards. That Juan went in there, made one speech and turned that, that whole strike situation around and eventually the reporters and journalists uh, won, won the battle. Uh, the Village Voice in New York did a uh, uh, front cover uh, piece on how Juan, Juan turned around that whole issue and won, helped win it for uh, journalists. After 9-11, uh, Juan uh, wrote a series of columns and ended up writing a book about the, the all the bad air that New Yorkers were still uh, breathing and being assured, oh, this is good air, 
uh, as a result of 9-11, and uh, it later turned out that the air was very dangerous to a lot of people, that uh, the mayor, uh, the president of the United States, everybody else said, oh, don't worry, it's, it's fine, go back and breathe that air and uh, continue your jobs around Wall Street. One thing we all know about Juan is that he's never been afraid to take on the establishment, whether it's at his newspaper, or it's in the media industry, or even in this organization. Many people said he could never win a battle against the FCC in our fight against greater consolidation. Well, he proved them wrong. He's always been an advocate for change, but much more than that. He's implored us many times to be an agent of change, and that's what he's always been, an agent of change. So one, many congratulations. You really deserve to be honored, and it's a pleasure to work with you.